check one two check one two check one two check one two three four five six Back to an afternoon start after the opening day, and it's all to play for. Yeah. I hope this mic is okay. And I hope this mic is okay. Check, check. Check, check, check.
Time. Yes, we're already two minutes late. Yeah. Mate, I'll go straight to. Cool. But you. <laughs> Elvis, right now you think about five minutes. Mic check, one, two. Time for the really city. Mic check, one, two, three. Farviz, Marufia. Cement presenting the How's That pregame show. Covered in dust. Last year. Stand by, lovely. Standing by. Straight down this camera, then intro Farvez, yes? Which is my close up? Uh, I think you'll be the other one. Um, I think I start down this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> Lucky we're adding glasses. Actually, yeah, you're perfect for the studies. <laughs> Generally, look. <laughs> True. <laughs> Into the distance. <coughs> Former test cricketer, are you okay with that? Uh, good morning and welcome to the Riddy City Cement presenting the How's That pregame show. I'm Andrew Leonard and for the first time in the 2018 TVS Everest Premier League, delighted to be joined, fresh off a flight, by the former Sri Lankan test cricketer, the great man to my left here, Farvez Maharu. Farvez, how are you? You've got in safe. Good, uh, very well, Andrew. Thank you very much. Just got in here last year. I'm excited to be here. Played last year here for my by myself, but uh, this year I'm excited to be in the com box. Well, you missed Super Saturday yesterday, Farvez, and what a day we had. We had more than 10,000 people here at the Kurdapur International Cricket Ground, and we had two crucial wins. The Kings got a big win to qualify them for the playoffs, and the Tigers stayed alive. How does yeah. that affect the table, Farvez? I think it's uh, affected uh, big time. I think only Pokhara, Ryan, for the moment, is out of the uh, playoffs. They have gone. So, but the rest of them are in the, uh, in the lineup still. So it's an important game. Today as well between Patriots and Gladiators, who is going to win, will qualify as number one. So it's going to be important that uh, you know one of these teams will do well. And also, uh, Kathmandu Kings still on playing tomorrow against the Warriors. So it's it's, it's a it's a very uh, uh, what do you call it uh, a tough tournament this year rather than last year. You know, last year it was just um, you know a few four teams just went through, but this year you've got five teams uh, fighting it out. Yeah, it's certainly all to play for and. It was a little bit like the London bus syndrome yesterday. We waited 12 games for a local Nepali batsman to make a 50. And yesterday we had three of them come along. Dipendra Singhari, Amitristra and Sonil Damala all passing that 50 landmark. And that's a good sign for the tournament. Absolutely. I mean, you need the Nepali players to be uh, doing well. I mean, uh, this tournament has been dominated by the foreigners mainly, but it's good that uh, Nepali uh, batsmen come into the runs, going into the playoffs, some confidence. You know, this is a high scoring uh, grounds for the moment. So you just had to uh, keep it up. Yeah, the pitches have been a bit mixed. Uh, today we're on the furthest left pitch again, which is probably the best, best batting pitch of the three. And today's match is going to be a side that hasn't been in action for a few days. They've had three or four days break. The Lalapur Patriots, they're going to play against the Barawar Gladiators. Who do you fancy in this one today? I think it's been a close game. I mean, having a big back in 2020 isn't the great thing. I mean, you need momentum going into, uh, going into uh, T20 games. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how these two uh, starts going to start up. So I think uh, whoever does well in the first power play can be the batsman or the bowlers. I think we'll have a big say in this game. Okay, well, Farvez, I'm going to pick the two star men because I know you're only just off the plane, but maybe you might talk us through them a bit. So for me, it's going to be Gareth Tomar. He's got to be the one to watch for the Lalapur Patriots. Two of his innings have stood out this tournament. 82 off 41 and 80 off 35. The Indian, he's a serious talent. Oh, indeed. I mean, I've heard a lot about him. Mansell glimpses of uh, his action. But uh, I think even Ravinder Singh is going to be very crucial. I mean, Batsman has been dominating this uh, series so far. I mean, I'm hopefully they'll uh, entertain us today as well. Yeah, and I'm going to go against the grain and pick a star man for the Barawar Gladiators. We're going to pick Mohammed David, his opening day spell, his four-wicket spell. I called it as the spell of the tournament, and he's a serious talent, the big Emirati. Yeah, I've seen him bowl. I mean, he's an experienced, uh, slingy sort of a bowler, nippy, quite skiddy as well. I mean, it's important that the fast bowlers go good as well in this tournament, so hopefully he'll, uh, he'll be up with guns today. Yeah, you can see the points table there on your screen, and Patriots and the Gladiators will almost definitely decide who finishes first and second. And there's a huge advantage if you finish first or second because you get two yeah. bites at the cherry to advance to that grand final. And that grand final is going to be Saturday the 22nd of December. We've been blessed with fantastic crowds. They're starting to 
This is the first day we just have a single header. Apart from the opening day, we've had six double headers up to now. And it's not just the on the field action here for Arvez, it's the off the field action as well. Use that hashtag EPLT20. We've got the expert one handed catch in the crowd. You can win 50,000 rupees. Did you see the one that was taken earlier in the week? Yeah, I did. I did so. And hopefully, one, one comes to combat so I can catch as well. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's been fantastic. I mean, uh, this tournament is growing day by day. And hopefully, uh, you know, this will uh, only get the players better out of them so that uh, this tournament will be much better coming in his come. Well, Farvez, please don't wish too hard because we've already had, as you can see up there, a, a ball smashed into the commentary box. It was by that man, Ravi Indra Singh, in that innings of 125 off 60. So be careful what you wish for in life sometimes. I think it's about time to take a look at who's won the toss. It's going to be over to Gaurendra Mala and Sherd Vasakar. They're joined by Navneet. Back to an afternoon start after the opening day and it's all to play for. Just two games left before we head into the playoffs and two teams fighting for top spot here. Gyanendra Malla and the Lalitpur Patriots, Sharat Vesavkar and the Gladiators and we're ready for the toss. Who's it going to be? It's going to be Gyanendra Malla to flick the coin, heads the call from the Gladiators and tails it is. Gyanendra Malla, you win the toss. What are you going to do? Uh, we'll bowl first. Okay. You'll have had a good run so far, three on the trot. You'd love to make it four? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, with in the top, uh, I think that would be perfect. Um, but uh, pass is pass, but uh, again, we have to start from the zero, so we are looking forward. Your opening batsmen have been doing all the job for you all. Worried that the middle order hasn't got a stint out here? Yeah, but uh, but then like uh, we'll be happy if they finish today as well. But then uh, other boys are uh, ready as well, and they know like uh, the roles uh, they have given. So everybody is comfortable with that as well. Any changes to your team? No, we're playing with the same team. All the best. Thank you. Okay, to both first. Uh, yeah, like uh, second match, uh, like second afternoon match, it doesn't change much. Uh, uh, well, uh, yeah, looking for a very good start uh, first up. Let's see how it goes. Worried about the loss yesterday? Not too worried. I uh, know it was just one bad game after three good games. So yeah, we got an opportunity to learn from our mistakes as well. So we can go better and win this game. Yes. And any changes to your team? Uh, just one change. We are playing Kushal instead of Hari. All the best. Thank you. Right there you go. The trend continues. The Lalitpur Patriots have won the toss. They're going to be bowling first. Yeah, thank you, Navneet. And uh, as you can see there, a lot of poor Patriots. They've won the toss. They're going to have a bowl first. It's nearly time for game 14 of the 2018 TVS Everest Premier League. We're going to be back to you with all the action after this.
welcome to TVS Ever Premier League, everyone. We're about to begin the game between Vairava Gladiators versus Lalitpur Patriots. Lalitpur Patriots means... Welcome back to match 14 here today. If you have missed the toss, the Lalitpur Patriots have won the toss and they have elected to bowl. They've stuck with that tried and true method. We've seen a lot of teams winning the toss, bowling first, wanting to chase down the runs and doing so successfully. Today's game, day eight, Lalitpur Patriots and the Bairawa Warriors. They are the top two teams in this match will decide who finishes top of the competition here. On your screens now, just showing the team lineups for the Patriots. The overseas players again, Gaurav Tolma, he's been so fantastic this tournament. Sunny Patel as well, and Kosoala, the wicketkeeper, rounding out their three overseas players. And for the Gladiators, their three overseas players who we've seen a lot of so far this tournament, the dangerous Mohammed Naveed, Ravi Inder Singh, who has set the tournament alight, scoring the most runs, and then, of course, the experienced Ryan Tenter. Discutter. Now the players, they're out in the middle, they're through their run-ups, getting ready to go for the first five overs of this match. It'll be myself, Francis Mackay, joined by Navneeth Krishna. Very good afternoon, Francis, and thank you. Yeah, another crackerjack of a game. Two teams right at the top of the table, the Patriots and the Gladiators, and it's all to play for. Both teams fighting for the top spot. And it's going to be Mohammad Naveed and Pradeep Singh Airi to open the batting for the Gladiators. And uh, surprisingly, it's not going to be Sunny Patel with the ball, who's been opening the bowling for the Patriots all along the tournament so far. Yeah, a little surprise here and maybe something to do with the conditions. They feel maybe not those early morning conditions. This might be the way to go instead. But uh, who knows? They'll be hunting for wickets early on anyway. A swing and a miss in the very first delivery. Bowling from the far end is Rashid Khan. He's certainly been a find in this tournament. And he's been spearheading this Patriots attack. Doing so very well. Good pace and bounce. Very first ball, Mohammad Naveed says, I'm going to go at you. Yeah, no having a look. He's just straight into it. Little bit of width early on and he's prepared to throw the hands at it. I'd say we're not going to die wondering in this wee patch here. And he swings again, a nothing shot really, the feet not going anywhere. Shorter in length from Rashid Khan. And he's been exceptional so far in this tournament, like I mentioned. And an afternoon start. Makes contact this time. Flies away to the third man boundary for just a single. Tactics very clear. And his intentions are there for everyone to see, Mohamed Naveed. Absolutely. It looks like he's here for a good time and not a long time, that's for sure. Still not a lot of footwork early on, but just prepared to throw the hands at it. We've seen it a lot. Width has gone to the boundary, especially early on in the innings, and I think he's just sweating on getting anything he can get his hands through. And look, he, he's trying to get them off to a good start. He's trying to make best use of this first six over power play. Much better. Nice and straight. And Pradeep Singh Ayurveda gives it the respect that it needs. Francis, we were here last evening in the commentary box. An emotional day for Nepal sport, definitely for Nepal cricket. And just being part of that and special. Yeah, very, very special moment for us both to be part of that. And, and really amazing how the crowd had come in in such big numbers, the lap of honour around the ground carried on the shoulder of his teammates. It was everything, probably and more, that Shakti Gauchan has deserved. So such a pleasure to be part of it and, and pleased to see he got that fitting send-off. This is a good solid start from Rashid Khan, keeping it outside off and asking, for the, asking the batsman to play the shots and hopefully make a mistake. It's definitely been one of the best local medium pacers in this tournament 
medium pacer, a fast bowler I would say. And Sunny Patel warming up for slip. He's generally had the new ball in his hand. Probably would open from the pavilion end. Yeah, he might have just pulled rank here and tried to get that slightly longer boundary on his league side, but it's been a good start anyway. An excellent finish to the first over, just one for no loss, the plan Welcome to match number 14 of the third edition of the TVS Everest Premier League. Just two league games left. And like I mentioned, it's all to play for. The winner of this game will definitely cement their play. The top. And they will definitely have two bites at the cherry. Powerfully hit down the ground by Mohamed Nabi. Just a single. And it's two good teams. Two teams in form. Exciting contest. It is exciting to see and great to see even at the back end of this tournament this is the second to last round robin game that there's still heaps to play for for all the teams involved whether it's today this is for finding out who gets that top spot who makes sure they see themselves a second if it does go wrong in the playoffs and then of course tomorrow the big game to decide who makes that struck down on this time by Pradeep King Ayri, just a single. And it's wonderful to see that the top four spots will be decided in the last league game, so that makes it very exciting for the fans and for the league in general. Yeah, absolutely. And as we can see, we've still got the fans just steadily streaming in there, so going to be treated to some fantastic cricket. Drops an absolute sitter. It covers. He hit that pretty well, did Mohamed Naveed. But that's as easy as it comes. Not the best of starts for the Patriots. Ghana has to be out. Well, the umpire says, I want to take another look at it. Goes to the third umpire. The keeper, Kol Savala, seems to be convinced that Mohammed Naveed was outside the white line. Very interesting tactics here from Mohammed Naveed. He went for it from the very first ball. He got a chance, an easy let off in the previous delivery. What does he do? Steps down, misses it completely. Has to be our yes. Tell me a little bit about this. Tactics here. Uh, I, I think it's been a little foolish. And there we see on our screen, that's out. I, I, I can't agree with it. I mean, if it does come off, it, it gets his team away to a great start. But I think that's a bit of a wasted wicket early on. And... Yeah, he didn't learn from that previous mistake. Either dropped the ball before, then out. They've lost their first wicket. It's three for one. One overseas player makes way for another. He's been the star of the show this season. Ravi Inder Singh, the highest run getter this season. Over 200 runs this season already. Hard hitting 125 when he was trying to get over 200. There you go, 248 runs. Have a look at that strike rate, 57. He's been the standout batsman this season. And he showed us that he hang in there 
and play to the situation as well. A very well compiled 85 that he scored in the last game. Yeah, we've seen a bit of everything from Ravi Inder Singh. We've seen just pure power, just getting stuck in, smashing balls to the boundary. And then we've also seen him have to play a bit more of a measured innings to make sure he can, can hold that innings together. So, look, I've, it's a disappointing to lose that wicket early, bring him in so early, but also maybe it gives him a chance to bat for the next 18 overs and maybe make another big score. Yanendra Mala's go-to bowler, Sunny Patel, delivers once again. Oh. Wide of the crease, angling it into the left-hander. And he's a skiddy customer, is Sunny Patel. Pushes it through. Caught Ravi Inder Singh by surprise there. Yeah, good, good variation there early out. Really wide on the crease and just pushing that one outside of the front of the hand. So not really spinning, but just angling in, sliding in and trying to attack the pads. Once again, dangerous this from Ravinder Singh. You don't want to be playing with a cross bat to someone like Sunny Patel. Two overs completed, three for one. It's going to be Rashid Khan to continue again from the far end. They have a good solid middle order to the gladiators. Ryan Tendis Carter and the captain Sharat Vesavka managed to get some useful runs in the previous innings. So he'll be confident as well. And they'll all need to come to the party. This is a crucial game. You don't want to be losing this and hoping for other results to go in your favor. Shot and wide. Rightly signal, wide signal by the umpire. Three teams with six points at the moment. The Patriots, the Gladiators and the Kathmandu Kings 11. We've seen it a wee bit, haven't we, with the new ball. The bowlers have struggled at times to find their radar. There's been a few wides delivered early on and just... Just the lacquer on that ball, meaning it does swing around. We've seen prodigious movement with those 9 o'clock starts and encouraging signs from the bowlers here. Even though it is a wide, still getting a bit of movement with that new ball. So, look, Rashid Khan, he'll be looking to make best use of it here. Another swing and a whist. No wide this time. It's been difficult to bat up first early in the morning, but in the afternoon here... Seems, um, seems more favourable for the batsmen and the little that we've seen so far. Yeah, and that's why it's key for these two here, just to give themselves a little bit of time to get in. What they don't want to be doing is losing too many wickets, which will really hamper their innings later on. They want to build a nice foundation so that they've got a platform to launch from. Much better. Excellent line and length from Rashid Khan here. The Patriots have won their last three games, courtesy some outstanding batting by their opening batsmen, the two Indians, Gaurav Tomar and Kolsa Wala. They've quite literally been winning games on their own. They beat the Kathmandu Kings 11 by 10 wickets, the most convincing win that we've seen this season of the Everest Premier League. And once again, Gyanendra Mala, the captain, no hesitation in bowling first. even with that jam-packed offside, manages to get a single in the end to backward point, and that'll be the key here. At the moment, it looks like a really stacked offside field. There's a lot of men in the covers and point region, so just being able to keep ticking the run right over, utilise the fact that there was a third man back on the boundary, use the pace to get it down there, get down the other end, build a bit of momentum into your innings, and then hopefully you get a the odd loose ball from there and you'll be away. a slow start here for the gladiators 5 for 1 15 balls bowled Mohammad Navi tried to force the issue early on and he
he was sent back very quickly despite that despite the Patriots dropping him very very happy and would be really happy the way his bowlers so far has have backed up his decision there haven't been any loose balls they've been right on the money we saw it early Mohammed Navid he tried to take the game to them and it didn't pay off for him and since then we've had you know reasonably respectful batting they've been happy to have a look happy to leave a few let them go through to the keeper just to try and get the pace of this wicket so then hopefully they'll be set up to play a big innings but so far they've got to be thrilled bowling first over two and a half overs, and there's only five runs on the board. Fantastic bowling, this from the Patriots. Mind you, they're not getting the same kind of assistance and purchase that they would have gotten if it was a morning game. But despite that, excellent line and length being maintained by both bowlers. Rashid Khan from the far end, Sunny Patel, as always, go to bowler for Gyanendra Mala gives him the crucial breakthroughs every time he's looking for one. Fantastic over this. Just the two runs conceded, including the wide. Three overs completed, five for one. Sunny Patel to continue with his second over and he's going to be bowling to Pradeep Singh Airi. and once again the gladiators find themselves in a similar situation it wasn't the best of starts yesterday as well but then they needed Ooh, patting pad probably there they needed Ravi Singh to bring in all his experience once again be rebuild that innings and build that crucial partnership that he did with his captain and similar state here again Yeah, they have. They've, they've managed to get themselves in a wee bit of a hole early on. The run rate, as you can see on your screen, only 1.5 and over, and lots of dot balls being strung together. And as we know, in T20 cricket, dot balls often equate to wickets. Well, I will like to say that I have, in fact, called that. Unfortunately for Pavan Singh Iri, he has not, not picked that as we would like to see disappointing shot from him because the boundary fielders were the ones out on the leg side along on in a mid wicket just looking to heave it through the leg side and as I said those dot balls they do build pressure they know they need to be scoring they know they're on a good wicket and he's just had a hoik across the line at that one and he's been bowled there's now five for two in the fourth over this start here for the gladiators five for two into the fourth over and once again trying to do a little too and losing success Sunny Patel picks up wicket number two and that brings the experience of Ryan Tendetskada to the crease 83 runs that he scored today in this season well as with his standards he'd like to better that for sure 
Appeal, appeal, a big appeal from Sunny Patel. Everyone go up from the Patriots. Boy, oh boy, this could have this could be a defining moment in this game. The big wicket of Ryan Tendiscata. The umpire says not out. Oh, I think, I think if we had the DRS available here, oh, I think they'd be going upstairs there, the Patriots. Oh, that's, it's disappointing. He hasn't picked it early on. He's playing, he's playing for the leg spinner, and instead it, it is the wrong one. It's come back, you can see on Tendo's face. Oh. Another appeal, it's all happening here. Sunny Patel. Leg by signal by the umpire, Sunny Patel is absolutely livid. He can't believe that one was given not out. Another look at the second. Ah, definitely striking him outside off. Yeah, first one, Francis, to be honest, that was hitting middle of middle. Yeah, I, I would be definitely, as a bowler, I'd be up for that. He's out, foxed him as well, that first ball. As I said, he was, he was playing for that little bit of leg spin, and in fact, it was the other one that turns the other way. And just, it, it just, yeah, it doesn't, it's not a good start from Tendiscate. He's trying to get himself. Uh, and that's just disappointing, isn't it? That the frustration of having those two close LBW shouts turned down. It's just turned off. We're still, we're still gesturing madly about it. But unfortunately, Sunny Patel there, he's missed out short and wide. As we've seen all tournament, width has been put away, and that's given Ravi Singh that chance to get a boundary, get off the mark, get going into his work. And is this, is this the moment where we start to see a little bit of momentum change? After the overs, it is 10 for 2. Let's take a look at that appeal once again. I find that hard to believe that that's not going to hit the stumps. Look at Kohl Savala and Sunny Patel go up. They were absolutely convinced. And this was the second appeal. Definitely striking him outside off. So the right decision in that case. But Ryan Tendiskata will be will consider himself very lucky to be in the center. And how crucial is that going to be in the context of this game? Dropped. Oh, it's all happening here this afternoon. Two chances that Ryan Tendisgata gets in the three deliveries that he's faced. And guess what? The culprit at Gully, Sunny Patel. No. Which side of the bed did Ryan Tendisgata get off today? Yeah, it looks like it could be his lucky day. That has flown to the man at Gully. Uh, catchable height, lovely into, into the stomach area, should have really taken it, got two hands to it, he spent all of that break between overs, remonstrating with the umpire, maybe just wasn't switched on Much better from the Dutchman on this occasion confidently struck comes back for two runs and if you're just joining in, it's all happening here this Sunday afternoon 12 for 2 the Gladiators We've seen two drop catches, an LBW decision go in favor of the batsman. This scoreboard could have looked very, very different, to be honest. And the gladiators will be happy that it's just two at the moment who have gone back to the dugout. The Patriots have been exceptional with the ball. But on some occasions, they have only themselves to blame. Those are simple catches that you can't afford to be dropping at this level. Yeah, and a dangerous man to be dropping as well. You saw with that, that 
LBW decision that's gone against them gives them a wee bit of a life there and then to follow that up they still could have had him out for nothing still could have had him out for zero but that catch goes down then you see he gets a, gets a ball out towards the boundary always runs well between the wickets picks up a couple and then another one he's able to just bunt into the offside and and now you look at it he's three or five he's starting to get into his work a wee bit but Look, the score, they're still 13 for two. They're still really under pressure, and oh, what another wicket here would have done. Good shot straight to the fielder, though. Francis, I'd love to get your thoughts on the pitch. To be honest, I don't think it's doing so much that justifies the 13 for two in the fifth over. Poor stroke play, to be honest. Yeah, well, we've seen, especially in those 9 o'clock starts, batting's looked a lot more difficult. Well, looking at the wicket today, it looked pretty flat. It looks like the groundsmen have done a great job with it. And as well, to touch, it wasn't that same cold touch as well, so not going to be as much in it for the bowlers. But so far, batting has looked very, very difficult, and they just haven't been able to get away. Another single, just one ball left in this over and just the three runs conceded. We've seen drop catches, huge appeals for LBWs. Sunny Patel was talking to the umpire after the over for at least a couple of minutes. And Rashid Khan on the other hand, with all the drama happening at the other end, Rashid Khan continues to go about his business in the manner that he's done all through the season into his third over and just the seven conceded excellent shot there clips it off his pads that will run away to the boundary yes it is a much needed boundary for the gladiators and to complete the fifth over the gladiators are now 18 for two Right, we're back live, the final over of the power play. And there's going to be a change in the bowling and a change in the commentary box as well. Someone who's been in the centre before knows more about this pitch than anybody. Maruf, welcome to Nepal and pleasure having you here in the commentary team. And to join him, well, there's always excitement with Andrew Leonard in the commentary box. So they'll take you through from 6 to 10. Yeah, thanks, Nav. And uh, great to have a new addition to the commentary team. Just an unbelievable coincidence arrived as the double headers have finished. <laughs> so he's here purely for the single headers for the rest of the tournament. That's nothing but a coincidence, is it, Farvez? So, uh, but it's good to be in Kathmandu. It's my second time here. Loving every bit of it. As well as uh, the cricket so far. I mean, so far as the power player is only 18 runs. On a beautiful bat and wicket, I'm surprised that... Uh, the gladiators haven't uh, got their mark off the again. As we see, and as soon as you come into the commentary box, we see action for Avez. And that's what the crowd wants because it's the first six of the day. And it's a maximum from the main man, Ravi Indra Singh. On the, on the uh, one foot, straight down uh, towards his leg side and uh, sweeping it over the squalic boundary. But you got the squalic in front of square rather than the. Uh, Feel a big square. So there's a big, huge gap big over at uh, Deep Squalic. As we see, uh, Surf bowling his first ball, going for a six. Yeah, and Pawan Saraf, who has already been a bankable player of the match, but he's under early pressure today. The poor fielding at the TVS Evers Premier League continues because that's going to be back to back boundaries, this time a boundary four. A good shot by Singh there. Expecting the ball to be uh, coming in a bit quicker. Short bat lift, punching towards short and wicket. A bit of bad feeling there, the deep uh, bit wicket feeler there. You see, yeah, you can see that it's he's hitting towards the shorter side of the ground, uh, the left-hander. 
and Sarah both breaks behind the big wicket of Kevin O'Brien earlier in the week. That's when he was a bankable player of the match. But Ravi Indra Singh is going after him and he's going towards the shorter boundary. Six or six. Yeah, long hop there by Sarov there. There's plenty of time for Ravi Singh to get back and smash it over long on. It's exactly what we did. Suddenly, all of a sudden, 16 of uh, just three deliveries, getting the Bradley Gladiators back into the uh, game again. Yeah, and we saw a tepid start from the Gladiators this morning. They gambled by sending in Mohammed Naveed as a pinch hitter. It was a gamble that didn't work, but Farvez Maharouf into Kathmandu and into the commentary box. He brings action. I want to see more of that from you. <laughs> Never a dull moment when I'm around with you, Andrew. <laughs> Delighted to have the former Sri Lankan test cricketer in the box to my right here. Cut away this time. Effort at a diving stop. He can't get a hand at it. That's going to be four more. Four boundaries to start this over from Saraf. Absolutely. Four uh, boundaries and another long hop by Saraf. It's not good bowling, especially in the power play to an informed player like Ravin the Swing. It's just, uh, just bad deliveries, to be honest. I mean, to one side of the offside, one of the leg. It's not going to do the work for them. Suddenly runs of four deliveries. the music seems to have changed in the background. Did you bring your, your iPod with your playlist with you as well? <laughs> Certain things which I can't tell you, Andrew. <laughs> Great atmosphere building up now. It was the calm before the storm. But Ravi Indra Singh's got the crowd bouncing now. Have you seen anything of Ravi Indra Singh at all? He's been so impressive this tournament, the tournament's leading run scorer. Absolutely, I've been uh, watching a little bit of glimpses when I was back in Colombo, as well as this Ravindra Singh, his uh, name is quite renowned in India. He's been known in the, in the Ranji Sophie's uh, circuit, so he's, he's someone that he has proven himself, but this is something uh, that he has taken to the other step by performing in this league. Yeah, and he's a man I'm sure is going to be wanting to get his name forward for the likes of the IPL. That's the end of the sixth over, it's 38 for two. some of the highlights on your screen there and that was a huge moment there's two big shouts consecutive deliveries from the leg breaks of Sonny Patel the first one looked absolutely plumb to me the second one correctly given not out and then the drop catch and ironically it was Sonny Patel who dropped that catch but then it was the Ravi Indra Singh show the Indian batsman the form batsman of the tournament he went down and pound Saraf he took that first over for 20 four six four and after a very quiet start to the gladiators innings he got the crowd rocking at the Kurdapur international cricket ground we're gonna have a change of bowling again you can see the crowd there coming in and it's gonna be Yagendra Karki one of many Karki's direct hit might have been close there Farvez yeah, it was quite a close call there for Anton Descartes, who's been living a, a charm life. And I thought uh, the first delivery of uh, the PW was uh, clearly a plum for me. And since then, uh, he's been living a very... It's important there, Anton Descartes, to take this uh, opportunity to get to some runs over here. It's important that this game, whoever wins this, as we know, is going to top the, uh, top the table. No more than medium... Kendrick Singh Karki, and to be honest, he's gone the distance this tournament so far, an economy rate of, of 12. And I think Ravi Indra Singh might be licking his lips, even if he's hitting to the longer leg side boundary at the medium pace. Bowled him! He might have licked his lips too much because middle stump is out of the ground. He did stick inside edge. I thought he's mistimed it, and uh, a lucky wicket for Akak Karki. Getting the prize wicket of Ravi Indra Singh there. Came around the wicket, he did Karki, trying to tuck up Ravi's Indra Singh. Tuck him up, he did. Didn't do a lot, just kicked on. It came off the inside. That's the third one. It's 39 for three.
Three wickets down inside seven overs. What a moment that was. He just struck 20. Off spin of Pau and Saraf, but off just the first ball. But Ravi Singh faced from Yugendra Singh Karki. He's bowled off an inside edge. That's a huge moment in this match for us. Absolutely. I mean, it's a huge wicket for the Patriots who take the glimpses of what he can do in the last over. And you see the new batsman, Skipper Sarad Wisfaker. So far, his high score of 39. Would like to add this uh, tally to a big score so that uh, the Gladiators will have a, a score to. Yeah, Wisfaker has been one of the local batsmen who have impressed me this tournament. Very calm head. He's a good leader for the Gladiators. Away, right away, just running one down towards third man. The tactics of the shorter side on one side of the ground, do they come into it quite a lot for you in the way you approach a match like this? Absolutely, sometimes you do, especially in the, these kind of conditions. And also, that's what made them, I think, opening with uh, Mohammed Navid to, uh, for the Gladiators to come over at uh, number one. So I thought it, it can work, it might not work sometimes. So it's just always a gamble when you play 2020 cricket. And uh, so far, the Patriots have done so very well. Yeah, there's five men outside the circle now. The power play has ended, and those men are at long off. Deep cover, a third man on the offside. It's a 5-4 field. Fine leg is in the circle. But we've got a deep backward square leg and a long arm. Pretty standard field for a medium pacer. Absolutely. I mean, taking up no chances. I would like to see one more fielder. Just put some uh, in the ring field. Just put some pressure in the two batsmen. Lost three wickets already. Driven straight to the man. We so often see that though. The captains, as soon as the power play ends, the fielders go scurrying and only four ever in the circle. Yeah, they're all about is uh, run chasing the runs down. But the, the fielding captain always, I mean, if they're chasing, try to keep the runs down. That's exactly what uh, the Garanda Malla has been doing with the support of the, uh, the experienced Kosa Wala behind the wickets. That's a nice line in length from Karki. Good piece of fielding, a cover. That's going to end the seventh over. It's 40 for three. So after that one over of Pau and Saraf that went for 20, Ranger Mala says, I've had enough of that because I'm going to go back to Sonny Patel and his leg breaks. He's been the star of the show, show so far, the Indian foreign. Yeah, absolutely. Sonny Patel has been born really well. Just important two overs the Patriots of uh, Sonny Patel. Could be interesting to see how is Garanda Mala is going to use uh, his trump cards two overs here. Here's the... LBW decision that we were talking about. Did possibly the umpire think it got him just outside the line? That could have been the case. In this, uh, the second uh, second LBW was uh, similar, but it was as you see. Uh, Big appeal pulled. again. First ball given this time. He's got his man. In fact, it's for Sacker to go. So Tendashade lives, but he's finally got the LBW he deserved. <laughs> Absolutely. The last two way ball. He had about three minutes to chat with the umpire. That would have prompted as well, but it looked out for me. As you're going to see the replay here, important wicket for the uh, Lalit Patriots. And the Pirate Gladys is losing their fourth wicket. Yeah, he was really caught on the crease. His feet went nowhere, Vasaka. And after two huge appeals, which we were literally just showing you on screen in Patel's last over, he's finally got the LBW that he possibly deserves. Patriot supporters, as you see the replay here, pitching out to us, um, Googly, oh, it just hits mid, so middle of middle again, uh, Andrew. Right. Be middle enough, that's 40 for four, get down. Coming in at number six for the Gladiators, it's going to be Arif Sheikh. And four wickets down. Eight. Over 
Rangers, and it's been Sonny Patel doing all the damage. He's got three for seven now. He could have four for easily. Absolutely, Randon. So I was very lucky to be there still. And these two batsmen got to be more circumspect when he's, when he's facing uh, Sonny Patel. He can't give any more wickets to him, neither. He can't take any more risks. So it's going to be important to see the experience uh, Ryan Tender Scott, how to tackle these uh, next few deliveries. That's the drag down. He's bowled so well so far, Sonny Patel. Why has legs been so crucial to T20 cricket? I think it's been a revelation if you take the, the World 20. I mean, lots of wrist spinners has been dominating when you come to the bowlers. Handful of uh, fast bowlers have been dominating. As we see, a leg side wide. And Sunny Patel going for another googly, but missing out the angle. I was speaking about wrist spinners, I think. Uh, it's, it's been dominated by wrist spinners all over the world in any leagues or international T20. And as we see, Sunny Patel just carrying on that same mantle. Yeah, you're talking about leg spin, and I'm going to give you a remarkable stat, Farvez, because the top five bowlers in the ICC T20I bowling rankings for 2020s are all wrist spinners. Rashid Khan, Shadab Khan from Pakistan, Kuldeep Yavav with his left arm Chinaman, Adil Rashid from England, and Adam Zampa from Australia. That's how dominant it is in this format. Yeah. All five wrist spinners. I mean, uh, it's been the nut. I mean, it's, it's, you need to get uh, grippy off the wicket. I mean, you just can't be predictable. 20 cricket, you have to be unpredictable as a bowler, as a batsman. And the wrist spinners uh, fills that boot perfectly for me. That was another variety from Patel. And that's going to change. they finish his third over. The Gladiators, 43 for four. So it's going to be another change of bowling now for the Gladiators. And they're going to throw the ball to a young man, Farvez, who I, I reckon could be a huge star of the future. One of the army of left-arm spinners here in Nepal. It's Lalit Singh, or La Lalit Rajbanshi. And for me, he's been outstanding. He gets drift and dip and turn. And he could be a successor to the likes of a Shakti Gauchan, who we saw retire yesterday. He's a beautiful bowler, and you're going to see him in operation now for the first time, live with your eyes, Farvez. A decent start by Lalit. Straight uh, right has got the punching towards the bowler itself. Yeah, looks a decent bowler. The stat shows this as well. And it's important that uh, the two spinners from both sides contain this uh, batsman. They've got another defensive shot by Ryan Descartes. Lalit uh, right in the mark, not giving that much width, uh, which Ryan Descartes li likes it. Likes to drive, likes to cut. There's no much width uh, so far. It's the drift he gets, which I think causes so many problems. He gets good action on the ball. Interesting as well to see him bowling from the far end from our commentary position with the shorter leg side boundary so that the skipper... Mala obviously trusts him and trusts his control. Yeah, I think so. I mean, left arm spinner has to bowl from the far end. If the left, hand, left hander comes into bat, you got to hit, hit with the spin to a longer boundary. So, a tactical move by uh, Ganendra Mala. But uh, as for the moment, I don't think uh, the gladiators will take much of a risk losing four wickets, not even ten overs. So, it's going to be the need to consolidate this uh, not a good start so far, need to a decent score. Slower this time from Raj Banshee, but down the leg side, signalled wide. And I suppose at a stage of the game like this, it's a difficult one, do you know, to stick or twist. Do you try and get to the 14th, 16th over before really going hammer and tongs at it? 
Absolutely, uh, Andrew. I think that's where the experience of uh, Ryan Tendas Carter comes in now. He's got to understand how the wicket plays, what's the best score to uh, best score to defend on this wicket. It doesn't look a great wicket to bat on. It's a little bit slow and low. Yeah, it's been the best batting wicket of the week by far. We saw this pitch we're playing on here, the furthest furthest left most of the three. We saw the record Picaro Rhinos total of 215 chased down by the gladiators. So over 400 so far today. It's going to be a dot to end an impressive start from Rad Banshee. It's 45 for four. After another outstanding over from Sonny Patel, he's got three for nine, but Mala, rather than going for the jugular, he's going to hold his star leg spinner back for one more over. He's going to go back to Powan Saraf, who's first 20, probably trying to get him into the game at a time when the Gladiators aren't really going for it. Cut away immediately. Endeshada short again. But there's protection out there, so just a single. Yeah, Pawan Sarah, another drag down. He saw a, not a good start in the last over, I mean, for 20 runs. And uh, it's not a good start either in this over. It's Pawan Sarah, it's important that he uh, supports the, uh, the ball from the other side. His bowling is all about partnership as well as batting. So, sort of need to get his uh, act going here. Looks for the sweep straight away. Half an appeal towards the square leg umpire. He's going to go upstairs. Just check if on that sweep up from Shake. Did his back foot drag out? It was only the, the keeper appealing, no one else did. Saraf just happy to bowl a dot ball, I'd say. <laughs> Got the right length, as you see the replay here. No ball looks fine. Legal delivery. So, good piece of work for the keeper, but at no point did his foot go anywhere. Pretty sure that will clearly be not out. It is, of course, single not out. Maybe mind game there as well. Sharaf got away with it. Yeah, it's been a lot of improvement and has a lot of good foreign players coming through as well. That shows that uh, this league is uh, getting globalized and people are waiting for the opportunity to come over here. Yeah, I thought it was brilliantly marketed as the world coming to Nepal. The world of cricket coming to Nepal cricket and that's what we've seen and as overseas players have dominated the likes of Levy, O'Brien, Sterling, John Simpson, Ravi Indra Singh, and Sonny Patel today. It's been a superb season so far, and we're just about to get to the action stages of it, really, as we advance to the playoffs. That's the end of the 10th over. The score now is 49 for four.
Yeah, you've just been seeing some of the highlights of the first 10 overs. And Kals, oh, Raj Banshee's got him. He's just about to pass over. Every change, but that drift that I talked about. It's done shaking the air. A horrible heave across the leg side. He was looking for the shorter boundary, but all that's happened is it's hit off stump. Beautifully bowled by Raj Banshi. It didn't turn, it just drifted in with the arm. That's the fifth. It's 49 for five. Yeah, so five wickets gone. And as I said, I was just about to get into the commentary box. We're going to pass it back over. He'll be joined by Francis Mackay. Thanks, Andrew. I'd just barely taken my seat and then the stumps were disturbed. So oh, I feel like I, I've brought a little jinx into the commentary box with me there. But look, that's fantastic bowling. And like you said, Andrew, it's just that drift, that drift in towards the stumps that's thrown the batsman off there. And being five down at the halfway point of the innings isn't a great way to start. But, you know, they just need to string a partnership together here, bat with Tender Scarter, hopefully get through to a decent total. Thank you, Andrew Maruf. Francis, it's clearly been an, uh, an afternoon that's belonged to the Patriots so far. 50 for 5 into the 11th over. Horrible display of batting on some occasions from the Gladiators. And Ryan Tendiscato, well, he's lucky to be in the center. But some exceptional bowling by the Patriots. Yeah, as you say, lucky to be there. And he now really just holds the key to this innings as well. If, if he doesn't manage to bet for the next seven, eight overs, I think they're unlikely to be able to post a decent score. And he's running out of partners at the moment. Rohit Kaudal, the new batsman in. Right-handed batsman facing the talented Rajbanshi. <laughs> Misses! An easy opportunity you'd probably have to say for Kolsavala. Went down the track and Rajbanshi sent it down the leg side. Completely missed the ball did Rohit Kaudal and Kolsavala made a mess of it. He's done all the hard work to get across there and he just hasn't managed to actually collect the ball. Excellent shot there. Found the gap to precision between third man and backward point. And four valuable runs for Brian Tennis Carter. Ends the 11th over, 56 for five. Despite all the missed opportunities that we've seen from the Patriots, 56-5 just goes to show poor display of batting that we've seen from the Gladiators. Yeah, it could have very easily been 6 or 7 down here from what we've seen. And as so often happens in cricket, there was that missed stumping opportunity. They managed to get through for the wide. And then, of course, the next ball goes for 4. It, it always tends to happen. It tends to, when you've got the rub of the green, it, it just as a way to make a bowler feel absolutely terrible about themselves. But you have to admit, the Patriots bowling has been on form today. Confusion, a bit of confusion there. Rightly sent back by Ryan Tendiscata. And they've been on point in all the four games that they've played so far. The Patriots, they've barely conceded runs even in the opening game against the Warriors that they unfortunately lost. They only conceded 105. 
which went down to the very last over. So it's been a very good all-round performance all through the tournament by the Patriots with the bat and the ball. And they might be a little bit of a surprise package team here for this tournament. There, there wasn't too much chatter about them going into the tournament. They didn't play overly well last year, but this year they, they really at the moment are looking like the form team. Fantastic hit there from Ryan Tendiscata. One bounce. Is that one bounce? Yeah, we're waiting for confirmation. Yeah, the umpire's going to check on that. But he hit that clean. That came straight out of the meat of the bat. And kept the mid-wicket fielder busy there. But no chance whatsoever. That very well did Ryan. Let's take another look at the replay here. Valiant effort there from the field. Difficult to say if that bounced inside. Probably a six, Francis. Yeah, I'm I'm happy to call that one six. And like a, a, as you said, a driving effort out there, a bit of risk taken from Tenderskada to try and get that boundary. But look, it really, really looks like they're trying to target this end here. nudging that one into the into the leg side and Pawan Sarah had a bit of a tough day today as much as we've said the bowlers have been fantastic he's gone for 31 so almost half the runs and just his 2.4 overs so it's been a bit of a struggle and maybe this is the time where the gladiators have to look to capitalize good feeling at covers cuts the single off yeah you're right Ravi Inder Singh took him apart for 20 runs in his first over Raj Banshi and Sunny Patel. Two dot balls to end the over. Raj Banshi, Sunny Patel and Rashid Khan have been exceptional. 12 overs completed, 63 for 5. Banshi to continue with his third over. One for eight so far. They're probably picking their bowlers, are they, Ryan Tendiskata? Giving Raj Banshi the respect that he deserves. Going after Pawan Saraf, having an off day today. Great piece of running out there. You can see as soon as Tendo hits that one, he's just off the mark, ready, looking for that two straight away. He knows he's got that reasonably well, and he can push that fielder out in the deep. Where we've seen that the ground fielding hasn't always been the easiest thing to do on this ground, and I agree. I think at the moment they're just looking for Raj Banshi. They're just looking to get through his overs. He's looked the form bowler today, and they just want to keep ticking it over. Single on the leg side this time. Dot ball. Yeah, he's been the standout bowler, has Raj Banshi. better this is exactly what they need at the moment they need an important partnership here they need to build rebuild this innings and Rohit Powdell there happy to give him company two of five so far hasn't had much of the strike and the gladiators would love to have Ryan Tendiskata on strike as much as possible quieter crowd on what has been 
a match that has been dominated by the bowlers so far, Francis. It has been dominated by the bowlers so far, and I mean, m most of the time we have seen that in the first innings of all the matches. We thought it might be a little bit different today, being in the afternoon, but it's been a pretty circumspect start from both the players and the crowd today. Steps down the track, probably got to the ball a little closer than he would have liked. Single to long off. 13 completed, 69 for 5. Right, as we continue into the 14th over, we have another guest at the boundary line. And Sanyukta, over to you. I have with me somebody who's a no, no stranger to this edition of the Everest Premier League, Farvez Maruf. Farvez, last year you were one of the players and this year you've come as a commentator. What do you have to say about that? I'm looking forward. I was looking forward to come uh, as a commentator this year. So last year I played for Kathmandu Kings 11 and captained them. But I'm very excited to be in the com box with some of the great names uh, in the system. So uh, it's, it's been a, it's a t change of uh, role for me. But I'm really looking forward to it in the next few days. Um, this year, the Everest Premier League, we see it's just uh, gone up a uh, go gone up a notch. It's become um, another level. It's gone on to another level. What do you have to say about that? What do you think the organisers have done more? You know, what is their uh, role in making the Everest Premier League even bigger this season? I definitely think that it's much better than like it was last year. It's the facilities, the ground facilities, the wicket in the middle, it's all have been uh, have been really good this year compared into the last year. So I think it will only get better. I mean, you see the most of the foreigners have come down, as you say, uh, not like last year. So I think uh, this will go step by step, and this is good for Nepal cricket. It's just rewarded the one day set up, uh, one day status as well by the ICC. So it's important that the Nepal Nepali local players play against these uh, international playing around the world and learn from them and of hopefully be competitive in uh, coming years to come. So, the, uh, uh, you know, a league like the Everest Premier League is such a big opportunity for Nepali players. What do you think about, you know, their growth? How is it to grow more uh, for Nepali players? What are the opportunities that uh, can present for themselves? Absolutely, that's what I said. I mean, playing against one of some of the professionals in the game, I'm a player like Ray Tendis Carter, the Barber Hyatts, the big names who, who go around the globe playing in this, uh, in this sort of league. So I think it's very important, especially the Nepali youngsters, you learn from them. I remember when I was younger, when I, mean, I used to play IPL, I used to play with my, one of my icons like Glenn McGraw and all these people, and I learned a lot. So similarly, this is the, op this is the opportunity for the Nepali youngsters, so you learn from the professionals who've been playing in this tournament. Uh, I, I know I shouldn't be asking you this, but if you had to pick a favorite, which is your favorite team? <laughs> All six teams, to be honest, but uh, I, mean, I have a soft corner towards Kathmandu Kings Hill and I captained them last year, so you know, I'm hopefully they will go far. I mean, to a big game tomorrow for them. And I've seen the rest of the teams are doing well. The Patriots are doing well, the Gladiators, the Warriors, even the Church It One Tigers, uh, you know, have been, been uh, doing all right. So I think uh, it's tough to choose, but as I, all I can say is I have a soft corner towards uh, Kathmandu King Silva. All right. Thank you so much, Farviz, for joining us. And, you know, we look forward to seeing a lot more of you in this edition. That was Farviz Maruf, and there's lots more coming up in this exciting game. Now back to the Combox. Thank you, Sanyukta. Fantastic to have the experience of Maruf in the commentary box. We'll come back to you. For now, it's 74 for 5 in 14. All right, into the 15th over now. The final phase of six overs and Raj Banshi to bowl his final over. One for 13 so far in the three overs that he's bowled. And he's been given a lot of respect by the batsman because he's bowling some exceptional left arm spin here. 
Rohit Podal, just the eight balls that he's faced in the four overs that he's been in the center. Yeah, he's come in just as Ryan Tendiskada. He's started to get going a wee bit in his innings, so he hasn't had the strike he may have wanted. Was that an edge? I thought I heard something. Probably a little too thick. Too much of a deviation after it went past the bat. Yeah, that spun a bit as well. And the keeper misses it. Well, Kolsawala has had his fair share of chances today. Stumping. Catch as well. Looked like an edge to me, Francis. Yeah, I'd agree with you there. Just a wee, a wee edge there. And I think, to be honest, uh, the wicketkeeper, he'd got himself into a bit of a tangle there. He'd almost got himself in behind the batsman. Not sure if he thought that was the ball that was going to slide on, but definitely from up here looked like the one that would spin away. It did a little bit, and it managed to find the edge as well. Short ball there. Tendiskada's eyes probably lit up the second he saw that. But just couldn't make enough contact on that inside edge for a single and that brings Pautal back on strike and it's good strategy to keep bowling the left arm spin against the two right handers and inviting them to play against the spin Again, looking to dance down the wicket and hit him over his head there and only managing to succeed in getting an inside edge that's run away to, to square leg on the boundary. But yeah, I agree. I think having the left armour bolt of the two right-hand batsmen, especially with it, just a little bit of grip on the surface, has been really useful and no one's been able to get him away so far. Shot. Fantastic shot. Over covers. Gave himself some room to Brian Tennis Carter and punched that over covers. For an they needed that badly with the Gladiators. 15 completed, 82 for 5. Right, final five overs of the second innings and just take us through till the very end. It's going to be Farvez Maruf back with Andrew Leonard. Yeah, thank you, Dav. And uh, the change up here, it's going to see a change down there as well because again, just seeing Karki is going to come back into the attack. He's only bowled one over so far, but he got the crucial wicket of Ravindra Singh. Five overs to go. It's got to be that man, Ryan Tendershadi, who holds the key for the Gladiators. Just saw you on the big screen getting interviewed, Farvez. That's up for the first test, just like a soda bottle, as soon as it comes. Yeah, I'm really enjoying being here. I loved every bit of it uh, last year as well. So far, so good. Some good cricket. You see the uh, bowling card. Yeah, and a good, good response. They were 49 for five. This little partnership between Tendashari and Powdell. The Gladiators back into the game. This looks like a clever bowler to me, Karki. Any pace on the ball for the batsman to hit. Absolutely. He pulls a bit of a leg cutter as well. You see the, the Bayra Gladiators uh, batting card ranked in the scar, the 37 of 35. Holds the key in the next five overs. Powdell. Seven of eleven deliveries. Not much budget to come. Then discard the key man. Pulled deep into the leg side. That's the largest part of the ground. Taken. Explain how important he was going to be, but Tendashada is gone to Karki, and Karki's got the two key wickets. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Clever change of ball, uh, change of pace by Karki. Not giving much pace, but Ryan Tenska is looking for. He's trying to make the pace, the length. But unfortunately, finds a deep mid wicket field. Yeah, it was slow. It might have kept a little bit low. I just wonder, is this pitch starting to tire a bit? That's the sixth wicket. It's 83 for six.
So it's going to be Krishna Karki in at number eight for the Byron Wild Gladiators. And we were just talking about that little mini recovery. And as soon as we did, tend to shout and only in Nepal, you can only have this here. It's going to be Karki to Karki. <laughs> Good one, Andrew. And brother to brother, maybe. Have you don't know? I think they're cousins. Um, four Karkis on show in this 2018 TVS Everest Premier League. And what's your assessment of the pitch so far? This was definitely the best bat batting three, but it just looks to be getting a bit slower and a bit lower. Definitely things. So. I mean, as you said before, it, it looks tiring a bit, but it's caught off 83, especially with the first five overs just been 15 runs. It doesn't help at all. Well bowled again, half an appeal. As Rashid Khan took the catch in the deep. Much to the dismay of the Gladiators fans. And the team that were so impressive, they won their first three matches. They looked like the forum team, the favourites for the tournament. They went down to the Kings 11 in their fourth game. Could be staring at back to back defeats here. That's the Gladiators card and remember the top scorer Ryan Tentashade was not only very lucky to survive a first ball shout for LBW but he was dropped shortly afterwards so although they're struggling they could be in even bigger trouble without that innings of 37 from Tentashade. It's going to be one of the what I reckon four star young seamers who've emerged at this TVS Everest Premier League 2018 to come in and bowl his final over. It's young Rasid Khan. Your first look at him, what do you think of him, Barbes? A decent action. I mean, nothing much uh, false to be said about the action. And uh, it's correctly said, one of the rising stars when it comes to Nepali fast bowlers, which is important to compete against these uh, good foreign players we've been having uh, right throughout the tournament. So I think uh, Rashid Khan, the set shows it. And what I'm seeing from the first glimpses, looks a good prospect. name like Rasi Khan, you're almost bound for stardom. <laughs> Indeed, the Afghanistani, what a revelation he has been as an all-rounder. You know, similar to Samjit Lamichani, who hails from uh, Nepal. Those wrist spinners have been dominating and getting a lot of opportunities around the globe. So it's good to see the wrist spinners dominating. And uh, as, as, as far as the fastball has come for Nepal, it's, you know, it's just been a lot from since uh, last year. Short and wide and signaled wide by the umpire. Generates good pace, uh, Rasid Khan. You're, you're going to see a couple of other young quicks, Avanesh Bahara. You're going to see him later on. With it. It'll be interesting to see if you think he bowls a little bit like Malinga, being a Sri Lankan. And then the likes of Bikram Saab and Lalit Singh Raj Banshi, or sorry, uh, Lalit Singh Bandari. They're the four seamers, seamers who've stood out for me this tournament. I was expecting good spin in the pole, but we've seen. Outstanding spin and some really good seam prospects. Oh. Beautiful land and land there by uh, Rashid Khan. Right on the off stump, photo, not giving much width. And uh, the batsman Karki feeds for you nowhere. I have never seen that in nearly 30 years of watching cricket. The batsmen have just run down and switched bats. Maybe the change of luck. Last three years, you didn't get a bat on it. <laughs> have it all here at the TBS Everest Premier League. The batsmen are switching bats. Can Karki get bat on ball? The new bat does the trick because he hits that down the ground for a single. His tactics are quite simple for Rashid Khan. He's trying to hit their heavy length and uh, make the batsman use all the pace. And he's bowling towards the shorter side uh, to the leg side, which is going to be a challenge for him. But so far, he's just bowled 3.3 overs for 13 a brilliant days so far. You see the hashtag on your screen there, hashtag EPLT20. 
Hervez beside me. He's a big Instagram man, so send us in your questions or your comments on the tournament, who you think is going to win. Use that hashtag, EPLT20, whether you're on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And in the second innings, myself and Farvez will get to a few of those, maybe answer a few questions from the fans. Solid contact down the ground. It's towards the man at long off. Taken. Taken inside the well judged catch. That's the seventh wicket. Very well judged catch there by the field of there. Burtha taking a good catch at long off and another wicket, a rewarding wicket for Rashid Khan, who's been very good throughout the day and getting his rewards now. Yeah, good reward for Rashid Khan. It was powered down the ground. It looked like it might go for six. But it was Kushal Bertel who judged a very good catch. It's 85 for seven. going to be another car key to the wicket would you so we now have moving car key <laughs> just like the Perez and the Fernandos back in Colombo <laughs> exactly right or the O'Briens back in Ireland <laughs> can't get away the Moonies as well in Ireland it's a family target once you've got the bug it never go so we may well see Kar if Yogendra Singh Kar Karki continues his bowling from the far end we're going to see Karki to Karki to Karki, it's Karki mania. The TVS Everest Premier League, but the Gladiators in all sorts of trouble. They're 85 for seven, they've got just over three overs to somehow battle up to maybe a run of ball, 120. <laughs> Big leg side wide, Rashid Khan coming round the wicket to the left-hander. He's changing his angle, thought uh, it's a correct call, not give it when he comes down the wicket. There's no much speed for the left-hander to go to. I mean, looking at these scores, 86 for 7 of uh, 70 almost. The next three years, if you could get at least by eight runs each, that will get them to about 110. 110, which is a, a good thing, a competitive score. Not enough, but uh, you never know when it comes to 2020. Edged. Taken by Kalsawala. He claims the catch. The batsman stands there. The umpire looks to his square leg umpire. He says, out. good decision. Again, a very good line and length by Rashid Khan, getting his rewards and a good catch by the wicketkeeper, Cole Swala. Again, the batsman, foot nowhere, just trying in the crease as we see the replay here. Yeah. For me, that's clearly carried. That's the eighth wicket. It's 86 for eight. Gladiators batting card, it's in complete disarray because Rashid Khan has taken two wickets in three balls with a wide in between the two. So he's not going to be on a hat trick, but Karki for a first ball duck. And it has to be said, I can't see a way that the Gladiators are going to battle up to that 120 I mentioned a moment ago, Farves. It'll be difficult. I mean, triple figure score must be their aim now, at least for the uh, psychological effect to in here. Rashid Khan, one more delivery. He would love to have a third wicket, I'm sure. Yeah, Kushal Mala, the new man, to the crease. It's going to end young Rashid Khan. He's got two for 14, end of the 17th, 86 for eight.
Patriots bowling figures so far. Remarkably, Sunny Patel still hasn't been given his fourth over. And he's not going to be given it yet because Yagendra Singh Karki is going to continue. He's got the additional figures of two for three from his two overs. And that medium pace on this slightly slow wicket today proving hard to get away. Especially those leg cutters, it's very hard to get away as we saw how uh, Ryan Dennis Carter got out. You know, so balls are dying on this track. And one more row from Sunny Patel from the far end, two overs from Karki from this end to finish off. Hit down the ground by Karki, off Karki. Just going to be a single and bring Mala on to strike. Farvez, you're already smiling in the commentary box beside me. <laughs> Never a dull moment when you're round, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, the crowd really filtering in now. It was a 12.45 start with it just being a single header today. We saw the double headers were 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. Certainly a very healthy crowd for a midweek Sunday here. Sunday a working day in Kathmandu. We push it up towards around three or 4,000 in the ground now. I want to see some late blows from Mala. Can he target the short side, being a left-hander? Swing and a miss. Yogendra Singh Karki, outstanding. Outstanding so far. Just giving a four, run, four runs of uh, 2.3 overs. And for Mala, it's just about slogging. I mean, I know that he's uh, trying to hit to the shorter bound, but it's always important.
Check one two three. Check one two three. Check one two three. Check one two. Check one. Check one. One. Check two. Mic check. One two three. One two three. Another exciting performance by the Lalpur Patriots with the ball and the bat and they've made it 4-4 four and four, and they become the first team to get 8 points and top the table. Welcome to the post-match presentation of match number 14 of the TVS Everest Premier League. And before I get to the captains and the man of the match award, I'd like to introduce the gentleman to my left, Mr. Sharat Rajpata, country manager of Export Education and Visa Services. And they've given us a very exciting award this season the expert single-handed catch in the crowd. And we had one absolute stunner taken in the crowd by Darshan Oli. I'm going to call upon Darshan Oli to collect his check for 50,000 rupees. <laughs> Only the second spectator all through the season to have taken a catch. We've seen a lot of sixes. But Darshan Oli took an excellent catch. Darshan, can you come over for a few words, please? How do you feel? I was very happy to think about how much I was going to do. I was very happy to think about how much I was going to do. What are you going to do with the money? I was going to study some of my studies. I was going to study a lot more games are left. Continue to take more catches and all the very best and thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Darshan. Right now, I'm going to get to the presentation party. Two distinguished guests to my left. Mrs. Roshni Bharti, Regional Manager, Kathmandu, Nepal, SBI Bank, Private Limited. Thank you, ma'am. And Mr. Ishwar Karki, SSP, Nepal Police. Thank you, sir. I'm going to start on by calling the losing captain, captain of the Bhairava Gladiator, Sharat Vesavkar. Sharat, tough luck with the bat here today. Uh, yes, sir. Well, uh, we didn't have a good start at the power play and like we kept losing wickets. Uh, so, you know, uh, we couldn't score much runs. That's, that's the main reason. Was it difficult to bat earlier on, even though it was an afternoon start? Uh, well, maybe a little bit, but, but it was not much of a big uh, difference in the first and second innings. I think I think we batted very badly, uh, to be honest. Uh, I think the boys have to pull up their socks now for the uh, playoffs. All the best. Thank you. Sharat Vesakka, the captain of the Gladiators, and now the captain of the winning team, captain of the Patriots, Gyanendra Malla. Well done, Gyanendra, you're making this a habit, four on four now. 
Yeah, uh, but uh, we need uh, we need a couple of more matches to make it have it. I think we we need to finish it up well. Right, you must be very happy with your bowling. Uh, yes, very, very very happy. I think uh, uh, very disciplined bro bowling. Uh, the, they are doing the basic rights and back up by fielding. So uh, very happy with the bowling unit. Although we are sort of few bowlers, uh, happy with the bowling unit. You were worried that your middle order will get exposed. They did get exposed today, but they did the job. For you. Yeah, I think they uh, uh, like they, they bowled well, but then uh, I think we played a few uh, rare shots, and then uh, we knew like uh, if we can make a good partnership, then we are through. So the target was only 93, so uh, it, it was not that much of pressure. So. You are at top of the table and the first team to go right at the top. All the very best for the playoffs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, the captain of the winning team, Ganendra Mal, and now for the man of the match, the first player to get a five-wicket haul in this season of the TVS Average Premier League, Sunny Patel from the Lalitpur Patriots. He'll collect his medal from Mr. Ishwar Karki. And a check for 15,000 rupees from Mrs. Roshni Bharti. Sunny, can I have a few words with you? You must be very happy. You look so comfortable with the new ball earlier on. I've been doing things many, many years, so that's what my role is in the team to do. And you're getting good assistance from the pitches here in Kathmandu as well all through the season. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's, a it's good for batsmen, it's good for bowlers. Just do the basics right and whoever clicks, it uh, depends on the day. Your team's batting and bowling is very well together. And now when you're heading to the playoffs, anything that you'll want to change? No, we, it's, we just have a simple plan. We stick to our stick to our basics, and that's what we try and do on other games. You've been doing really well also all through the tournament, Sunny Patel, and all the best for the playoffs. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. There you go, the man of the match, Sunny Patel. Five overs, four four overs, five for twelve. First player to get the five wicket haul. That's it from the presentation ceremony here, and for now, it's back to the commentary box. Thank you, Nav, and what a fantastic performance there from Sunny Patel. That first five wicket bag and. Oh, what a what a day it's been. We we found out who's going to top our table. It is the Patriots. They are going to go into the playoffs as the number one team. We've still got some more cricket to bring you, though. It's not done and dusted yet. Whilst we've had those 14, we've still got one to play. It's going to be a big one. Tomorrow's day, day nine, in the TVS Everest Premier League. We've got the Kathmandu Kings 11 taking on the Brat Naga Warriors. Crucial game for both teams. The Warriors must win. They're coming off two losses. If they don't win tomorrow, they could well be going out of this tournament. And the Kathmandu Kings, they'll be wanting to win to solidify their place within the top four. It's been a fantastic day's cricket. We've, we cannot wait for tomorrow. It's only a single header again. There's this one game, the last game, the last game of the round, Robin. It's a 12.45 start, so make sure you are here, you are watching it because you don't want to miss one ball of it. Thanks for watching today and we're going to leave you with the highlights from today's match.